All right, so this is module number 13. We're gonna talk about trellising and plant support and protection. And so I'm standing here in front of a, I call this a cattle panel. Um, it sometimes is called a hog panel. It's sometimes called a utility panel um, and a couple of T posts. And so these are um, really nice, strong posts that have to be placed into the ground with a T post driver. It's just a, uh, a manual tool that you utilize to get them synced into the ground about two feet. So you've got nice, strong support here. This is different than a welded wire piece of fencing. This is a very rigid, it comes in a, a flat um, run of, uh, of fencing. And <clears throat> the diameter of this uh, wire here is, gosh, maybe about a fourth of an inch. They can vary quite a bit, but very rigid. You need to use a bolt cutter to size these guys. Most of them come about 16 to 20 feet long. This one was the same, uh, and I just cut it to fit this bed. It's something that you cut once to size a particular bed, and then either you leave it or um, you take it down at the end of the season if you're going to rotate your vegetables and you need the trellis somewhere else. Um, but it's, you know, it's something you've permanently done, of course. And so I like to use um, this type of structure with a lot of different um, vegetables and fruits. So tomatoes being one of them, I'm not a big fan of tomato cages. Those little uh, round tomato cages that have the three or four long pieces of wire that poke into the ground. Um, if you're growing a substantial number of tomatoes, dealing with those cages can be quite a, a nuisance in the off season. Um, more than likely, you have to then find place to store them, getting them stacked together because those little wires, they're not very strong, not like this, and they um, bend a lot. And then sometimes, depending on the density of your soil, they can be hard to get rested in there. And then also, depending on the size of the cage itself, they, in many cases, aren't strong enough to hold a tomato. Uh, a tomato, especially an indeterminate tomato, and especially if you don't prune your tomatoes and you let them go kind of natural with their plant growth, you know, with their sizing, then they um, can be six, eight feet tall and, you know, four or five feet wide. A tomato cage isn't really going to be able to hold that up. Um, so I use something that's a little stronger and something that gives me a, a, a linear or, um, you know, kind of a flat face that I can work with. And I use twine, just garden twine, jute, um, hemp, something like this, um, to take the primary initial trunk or stalk or stem of my tomato and um, give it its first support. And so when a tomato is starting to put on substantial um, structure, it's time to go ahead and give it some support. A tomato will lay down on the ground and just sprawl along the ground just fine and produce tomatoes all along and will be no wet, you know, no worse for the wear, the plant itself, but you'll have dirty tomatoes that are hard to harvest and hard to find. Um, a tomato can be unruly and, and quite, um, uh, you know, just really puts on a lot of growth. And so, um, you want to be mindful of that and get ahead of your uh, get ahead of your tomatoes before they go crazy on you too wild. And so these are just getting attached here. I should have done it uh, a couple of weeks ago. The tomato is, um, you know, it's you know doing doing well, but it does have um, some initial uh, turning where it was laying down, and so that will correct itself. A, a plant. You'll notice this with a, with a sunflower. Um, they orient themselves to the sun and they orient themselves, um, you know, to the, to the sky. You know, they're gravitrophic, they're, um, their roots go down, their plant growth tips go up, and um, they orient to the sun. Tomato, or a, a sunflower does that really um, distinctly. You'll notice that during the day, it follows the sun all through the day. And so a plant does move. And if it has started to develop a structural curve because it was laying down, it will correct itself. It's not a problem, um, but don't let it get too wild in that way so that then it's hard to untangle and get set up. But I like to take um, the, the primary stem and I just do a loose, 
a loose wrapping of the twine. I don't want to cut off the circulation of that tomato. I, won't, I don't want to tie it too tight so that that um, restricts the growth of the stem, but I want to make sure that I've got a nice secure wrap around the, the tomato stem. And I do that <clears throat> just under a leaf node, a nice strong set of leaves so that um, there's something to kind of hook that, um, that loop to. And then I'm tying the tomato underneath the, sh you know, in its armpits, underneath two branches. And then I just um, attach it to the, the rungs of the fence here. And then I do the same, just a little slip knot that's easy to um, take down later and reattach if I need to. But being that these are indeterminate tomatoes and being that I am not so much of a tomato pruner, I will make pruning cuts if I need to um, where it is advisable. But you'll see that there are several um, you know, strong branches that are going to produce fruit that can you know, help enhance the overall um, yield of this plant. And so I'll watch for that and I will tie those up. I won't let it get too crazy. I won't do six or seven or eight of them. I will start to prune some of those suckers out so that they're not taking away energy from the fruit that I'm trying to size and have developed before the end of the season. But um, I do like to have several branches and arms. The beans here were planted, you know, in May at the same time that the the tomatoes were transplanted into the ground. Um, again, I just tied these up a few, two days ago. And so I had to wrap these beans them myself. Um, they like a really thin, they like a really thin pole. They do a spiral. Beans and peas like to do a nice tight spiral around a thin pole. And so this is spaced out a little bit too, you know, I wrapped it myself and so this bean would have preferred to be a little bit tighter and it will tighten itself up um, as it goes. And so they grow so fast once they start to put on these, um, these vining runners. And you'll see that they're going clockwise up that little pole. And so let them do that themselves. You know, once you get them that initial start, you could even have hung down a piece of that twine and taking it and making a little ground staple and right next to your bean plant you could you know tie off the the twine and then do a little ground staple right next to your bean plant and then it had something to climb up while it was still tiny i can do that in another location here and show you um, when we do another scenario for um, getting some bracing and trellising for different crops tomatoes beans peas cucumbers are all very commonly trellised or need support. Of course, they will produce their fruit, whether they're um, trellised or not. It's just, will you be able to see it, to harvest it? Will the yield be as substantial if it had good airflow, if it had good structural support? Maybe not. So do consider your trellising and your caging and support when you are purchasing your transplants and when you're designing your garden. Are you gonna have space for that? That's why having this single, you know, kind of linear setup for a structure um, is nice. If I had to have cages that were going to be big enough to support these tomatoes, I would have needed to put the tomatoes a little further into the bed and used a larger cage. You could use something that's kind of similar to a tree cage for your tomatoes as well, uh, a round cylinder that's like a tree cage and that's fine for your tomatoes as long as it's got enough structural um, stability so that the tomato doesn't knock it over in a windstorm and then your tomato falls over your cage falls over your tomato might break and then you lose all that growth and um, that's just sad another um, couple of plants that could use some support potentially if they get their um, growth spurt and really put on some great um, structure would be your peppers that's where those tomato cages that are a little um, flimsy or small are great. Um, use those with your um, tomato or your peppers, your eggplants. Those plants don't necessarily need a support structure, but they might benefit from it if they are putting on lots of fruit and their branches get a little weighted down. Sometimes I've had peppers um, that, you know, it could be a nutritional deficiency. Maybe they didn't have enough copper and they didn't have enough flexibility in their branches. They put on so much fruit, their limbs broke. 
You see that with peach trees a lot. A lot of fruit trees can break their limbs because they put on too much fruit and just can't support it. And so look at your um, fruiting crops when you're seeing them start to produce and, and determine whether or not they're gonna need a little support. Okay, so we're gonna go over to another location and talk about another way to do some trellising that um, doesn't involve this panel, but still involves the T-post, which is rather simple, inexpensive. We're trying to work with items that you might have around your house or around your um, shed. So this would be one. Fencing is pretty easy to, to get and you can get several um, setups, you know, several beds out of one of the um, cattle panels. All right, so this is part two of module 13, plant trellising, support, and protection. So we have our two T posts like we had over there where we had the, the cattle panel wired to the T post. This is another way that you can create another um, linear uh, flat uh, exposure type of trellising. Great for beans, great for um, tomatoes, great for the melons or cucumbers, um, items, fruiting crops that need a little support. Great for your hardy kiwi, so many grapes, anything like that. So this is just, you know, a, a kind of a modification of that. Um, we've got two plumbing fittings. Uh, these are just uh, PVC uh, tees and these are one and a quarter inch. And so they fit right over the top of that T-post. And then um, what I've got in my hand is a piece of electrical conduit. I didn't cut this down to size because I'll use it for another scenario, another setup. But I just wanted to show you this so that you could kind of keep that in mind, be innovative with whatever you've got hanging around um, at your place. If you've got a, a, a you know, a scrap yard of stuff, Maybe you have some of these items already in your um, possession that you can use for trellising. And so um, again, just a piece of conduit. You can get this at any electrical supply um, store. You can also get it at any big box store like Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, those guys. Same with these guys. You can get these at um, you know any of those stores, but you can also get them at True Value or um, TSC or Orschelins or um, any farm and feed type of store, you more than likely are going to find those. And so right now we've got support, good, strong support. This can handle some good weight. <clears throat> You're not going to be doing pull-ups though. It's not that kind of weight, but handle your tomatoes. Three tomato plants, it's got it. And so same scenario, taking your, um, and what I like to do when I use the twine is I like to go ahead and size it to my brace and to the plant and pre-cut it. And then if I'm gonna actually tie this to my plant, then I wanna tie it to the plant first before I pull up and reach to this. I don't want to um, tie it here and then try to make that work with my um, plant. I don't wanna rub the um, outer uh, skin off of, my, off of the stem of my tomato. So I would go ahead and make my tie before um, tying it to the brace. These tomatoes are not quite large enough yet to tie. I don't want to um, have any potential breakage. These tomatoes went in the ground on June 12th, and so they've only been in the ground for, gosh, what's that? Less than, you know, just over two weeks. And they weren't, you know, they were kind of misfit little tomatoes. They weren't very strong to begin with, and so they're just starting to hit their stride. And so I don't want to, um, I don't want to stress them out, so I'm not going to tie them right now. But I just want you to know that that's how I would do that. But another way, say you've got this, you know, you want to go ahead and get this set up, and you've got the same scenario that I do, and you want to get this tomato um, trellising figured out. Um, you can take this is called tension wire or tension wire. You would get this at. Um, you know, any of those stores, any of your farm and feed stores, or you can get it at the big box stores. Um, this is a galvanized wire. This one is 12 and a half gauge. To make these ground staples, it's better to use a nine gauge. It comes in the 12 and a half, a nine, and a 14. I'm gonna just show you an example of this made with the 12 and a half. That's a 100 foot roll. You can get that for 20, 25 bucks 
at our, our local um, farm and feed stores, TSC. So <laughs> easy to come by and it'll make, you know, if you get the nine gauge, you'll make, you know, a hundred staples. They only need to be about 12 inches long. The one I'm making here is a little long. It's just a piece that I already had cut. So you make that staple, you go ahead and press that into the ground and then you've got a place to tie this twine that's not going to um, stress your tomato because you're not tying it directly to a baby tomato that's not quite ready for that um, intrusion. And then you can go ahead and tie it off to your, um, your brace. And again, we're looking right here at about a four foot tall um, horizontal support. And so that is, that's enough for a tomato, but I'll tell you, uh, indeterminate tomato, you could use a, um, an eight foot tall situation. And so think about the size of your tomatoes. Are you gonna be pruning them back? Um, are you gonna try to keep them kind of short and stocky? It just depends on what your tomato variety is, how it's, um, fed, whether it'll be tall and lanky and all of those things, but you need strong support either way. And so you could then, um, you know, attach this twine to your tomato with a tomato clip or um, a little twist tie or something like that. Or um, if it were a little closer, you can wrap that twine right around the stem of that tomato and that will be a good start off. Um, but try not to be too abrasive with a young tomato that's only um, 18 inches tall and very tender yet. Don't get too aggressive with it um, because it will not like that. It will be too stressed. A little qigong, a little wind, a little, you know, hey, strengthen up, get some tensile strength. Um, that's fine. Talk to your plants, touch your plants, love your plants, don't stress your plants. All right, so that is one quick setup that you can do with um, easily acquired uh, materials from your local big box store. This is another scenario. Again, I didn't cut this to size. Same setup. It's just with a one and a half inch um, T. So this is an eight foot long uh, two by two. If you have two by twos and you don't have the metal conduit, you can use an inch and a half T, the um, PVC T. Fine, it'll work. It's gonna have good structure. Um, just cut it to length. You've got your second setup right there. It's, this is a, a inner diameter of one and a half inch. This is right at one and a half inch, a little bit dimensional lumber these days. It says it's a two by two, it's not. If you take a measuring tape to it, you'll see it's right around an inch and a half. And um, that works out fine for an inch and a half um, uh, PVC. But <clears throat> you would also see it doesn't go past the inner um, part of the T, so you will need to cut it to length. Um, last potential setup with these um, T posts, and again, this is a T post driver. Um, we have those in the tool lending library. You can get them at any of those big box stores, um, 25 bucks or so, and um, you can set your T posts in the ground. This is another way that I like to do this setup really um, fast, quick, and easy. Just doing um, <clears throat> that same 12 and a half gauge <clears throat> galvanized wire, tension wire. Um, you see that the T-post has these bumps on it that will restrict this wire. If you do it tight enough, using a pair of, um, of pliers, flat nose pliers, to get this nice and tight would be ideal. And you want it nice and tight, again, because you need strength. These tomatoes are gonna put on a lot of fruit. You know, you can have a tomato plant that puts on 80 pounds of fruit. Uh, depends on how healthy and how early you got that tomato started. Um, depends on the scenario, where you live. Um, but you do want it to be nice and strong, so pull tension and then wrap it. I'm not gonna do that with this one because this is not gonna be my permanent setup for this particular bed, but you can see that you can do that and you can do the same twine hanging down. Inexpensive, really easy to come by ways to get trellis in your garden. So ways I like to do it. You can also do just a single post, you know, a wooden post or a metal post right next to the, the stock of your tomato. And you can set those right after planting while the root ball is nice and small and you're not interfering with the, the root system of that plant late in its growth here. Uh, but you can use you know any of the fence posts that you would find at your local big box store, put it right next to your tomato, and then you can just brace that tomato with a little of the twine right next to that post, attach it, and 
that's not quite as great for like a really, you know, if you're gonna allow it to have uh, heavy arms with lots of fruit, think about that. But if you're gonna keep it pruned, that's a good way to go. So that's our trellising. Tomatoes, cucumbers, beans, peas, melons, small melons, squashes, great. Here's protection. And so um, we're, we're not talking about protection for cold right now, but what we could be protecting is from heat. <laughs> this can act as a shade cloth and as a um, temperature buffer as well. So this is a really um, thin piece of row cover. One of the common names of this material is Agrabond. One of the common um, product names or brand names is Agrabond, but it's sold by many different um, manufacturers. You can find it. And this is a really lightweight. It's got about 90% transparency and it's a, a, I think it's a polyethylene type of uh, webbed spun type of thing. It's not woven. <clears throat> Pretty easy to come by. This is a six and a half by a 30 foot piece of this um, because I have really long beds at the farm. I'm not really long, but I have beds that are longer. I'm using a piece that is longer. I usually get it in a roll. And so you can buy it in rolls of five, a thousand, um, you know, 1500 feet, and then you can cut it to the size you need it. I just wanted an example here, something that I could reuse. And so what I'm putting this over is rebar. So an 18 inch or so piece of rebar pressed into the ground. And this is um, <clears throat> irrigation line that you would buy to do, um, it's not for uh, heat, you know, it's an in-ground line, the cheaper version, not like a PEX, it's not for hot water, it's for regular uh, cool water, translocating water from one source to another in the ground. And so this will handle, I think, 100 PSI, and you can get it in a 100 foot roll from those big box stores. This is a three quarter inch piece of uh, hose. And so it's in a roll and I just cut it to length. I know how wide my beds are. This is not made for this bed. This is just an example, but <clears throat> uh, this is cut for the width of the beds of the farm. And so I just put this over the rebar. So I've got two pieces of rebar. I've got the um, similar sized uh, hoops. And then I have my row cover that's going to drape down over these hoops to protect plants. And so when would this need to be utilized at this time of year? Why would we be putting row cover over plants right now? And so had we put them, <clears throat> put row cover over eggplants or our bok choy, tatsoi early in the season, we would have cut down on the potential of those flea beetles getting to our plants. And if we do this now, we will cut down on the damage that the squash borer is going to end up doing to our squashes. So if this was a row of zucchini right now, then I would be protecting this row of zucchini from that squash borer and also from the squash bug. Um, some of the, if the pest insect over winters in the soil and you planted that variety of plant there last year, you could have those um, pests emerge from the garden bed that you're now encapsulating with a row cover. So be mindful of that. Another reason why you would use this is because we are right now going into um, the hotter part of the season and some of your crops, like your cool season crops, say it's your spinach and you're still harvesting it or lettuce, and it hasn't really succumbed to the heat yet and it's still quite um, viable as a, as a harvest, you could put a little row cover over it right now to give a little shade. White is gonna reflect the light away from the plant. It's gonna keep it a little cooler and um, it's gonna you know, cut down on some of that heat stress. So that's an option. Another reason, we'll talk about this in a minute, is if you're going to start successional planting some of those cooler season crops, this is a great way to retain moisture in that little zone and also do that um, heat blocking thing. So we've got pest prevention, we've got shade, we have moisture control. These are great reasons to utilize the row cover. Another thing that you could do if you, um, if you don't wanna go through the process of getting 
the clips, which these little clips are three quarter inch C clips. Um, you can order them in bulk or you can order them in the pack. Uh, I'll provide you with a link for this, um, but they go quite nicely. You know, three, to, three quarter inch C clip goes really great over a three quarter inch outer diameter um, irrigation line. Perfect little rebar. You can get our rebar um, cut locally. You can get a 20 foot piece of rebar at our local uh, concrete place and cut that yourself into the right lengths. And then you've got this whole setup. But if you don't want to go through that whole process, you've got a row cover. This could even be a bed sheet, by the way. It doesn't have to be a purchased piece of row cover. You can use that tension wire that we were using to make ground staples. We're also using um, to make the top wire on our trellis. But I would use the nine gauge. And the nine gauge could be used for all three of these things. It can be used for this top wire. You're just gonna need to use a little more strength to get it to wrap tightly and to stay. But you can make wire hoops out of the nine gauge tension wire. Just make them to the right length for the row that you're needing to cover, whether it's your zucchini, whether it's your uh, carrot seed rows that you're putting in right now, um, lettuce or spinach plants that are still being harvested. Make those, stick them into the ground, you know, at least six inches into the ground, and then make sure this is really important to weigh it down on either side, uh, all along the row cover. And so you want that row cover to be in contact with the soil so that the pest insect that you're trying to prevent doesn't crawl under, if that's what you're trying to use the row cover for, doesn't crawl under. That could be rabbits too. It can keep rabbits out of your, um, out of your uh, cabbage or your broccoli or you know, keep deer off your chard, um, things like that. You can use row cover as a protection for a lot of things, but it needs to be adhered to the ground if you're trying to protect plants from being eaten. Um, but if you're just trying to do a little bit of a shade, you know, provide a little bit of shade or moisture retention, it doesn't need to be attached to the ground. And you could just use, if you're using the wire, you could just use a clothespin or a little clip, you know, the little black clips that you put uh, stacks of paper together with, you can use that. Um, if not, go this route, C-clamps. All right, so that's our third module complete, or 13th module complete, the trellising support and protection.